the first thing first is the glabular complex where we have the procerus and the corrugated supercilia what do you say the frown lines actually always remember lines and wrinkles comes perpendicular to the muscle action the corrugators are adductors and uh, depressors so there is a medial and downward pulling while procerus is a depressor so the lines which you see they come perpendicular so the movement is horizontal the lines are coming vertical actually while if you see the frontalis muscle which is the sole elevator on the forehead the frontalis is an elevator actually so it's moving the the skin upwards and you see the lines horizontally so lines and wrinkles comes perpendicular to the muscle action now for the procerus if you see the midpoint basically intramuscular point the belly of the procerus the central point of the procerus is the point where you inject please be advised that as a beginner if you want to remember how much to be injected you can keep your upper limit as 10 units let's say if you have someone with the very strong glabular complex then only you can inject 10 but otherwise normally you can inject anything from 4 5 6 7 8 units uh, in the muscle so intramuscular injection intramuscular injection you go and inject the procerus muscle let's say here 5 units and then you have the corrugator the belly of the corrugator basically so the belly of the corrugator intramuscular again 5 units and then again you have the belly of the corrugator 5 units so let's say 5 5 5 are the three muscle bellies 5 for the procerus 5 for each corrugator intramuscular then when you tell the person to frown you will see a small dimple you will see a dimple in the end each side and that dimple is actually what do you say because of the tail so in that dimple only you go and inject horizontally just below the skin as the muscle so i by habit would inject two units each uh, the tail of the corrugator so we have 5 5 5 and for the tails that dimple the last notch which you see two two units each side then coming to the to the frontalis uh, i would like to suggest you here that leave the lower end of frontalis at least one finger width or what do you say 2 cm above the supraorbital rim alone leave the lower frontalis alone if you leave this lower frontalis alone and why i am suggesting you is because frontalis is the sole elevator here so if you kill the frontalis completely you will have brow ptosis you will have lid ptosis so you will have chances of complications but if you leave the lower 2 cm of frontalis alone being the sole elevator you will never have complications of brow ptosis then you look at expression and if the expressions are uniform each side you start from the middle so the central point you inject and then accordingly till you see the movement you inject the other points my habit is to inject above between the lower points so i go and above inject above i inject above inject above and till i see the movement remember the movements are not only in the middle if they are you see the lateral movements you inject laterally also because if you do not inject laterally and you inject only in the central area later on you will find a very funny movement of frontalis lateral frontalis and so on sometimes people doctors they ask where to inject normally the idea is mountain toxin valleys filler so that fold which you see actually is the point where you inject the toxin i personally likes to inject like to inject these particular points on the forehead intradermal so i inject intradermal and let's say each point we inject 3 to 4 units so let's say 3 units each point we inject intradermal and so on what advantage i find injecting intradermal is intradermal points or intradermal injections do not tend to uh, uh, diffuse downwards post injection so chances of complication again like brow ptosis or lid ptosis are absolutely nil uh, when you do that and so on then coming to the crow's feet which is because of the lateral fibers of the orbicularis oculi muscle being a sphincteric muscle the the lines are coming radially basically so these are the radial lines which you see and uh, what you do is you feel the orbital rim 1.5 to 2 cm outside the orbital rim is your point number 1 of injection and an arc above like a c and an arc above and an arc below are the other points of injection you inject 
so like a C basically. So you 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 are injecting in a in a semicircle manner. So one point directly outwards, radially outwards, one point five to two centimeter outside the orbital rim, that bony part. Point number one and point number two. Point number three. Again, in this case, if I see normally that the lines are radially running outwards, I try to change these lines by injecting between these two points here and between these two points here and between these two points here. I'll inject. Please be advised that inject left side from the right and approach right side from the left. Why? Because the needle every time you inject should be away from the orbit. So normally, when you are operating around the eye, the needle should not be towards the orbit. It should be away from the orbit. Again, these points are, I would say, superficial dermal. So I try to raise a bleb like a mosquito bite here, and three to four units each point can be injected, and and so on. And depending on the number of points, the units can be distributed along this area. Post injection, I do tend to take a little bit of Vaseline and pull them outwards. Actually, massage them outwards, not towards the eye, outwards, and so on. So that is for the periorbital area. Uh, certainly, men and younger age groups. If I do not see any line going upwards, I can skip this upper point for this male patient. Why? Because weakening, too much weakening of lateral fibers of orbicularis oculi can cause uh, a contralateral pull by basically by the frontalis muscle. So I don't want the brow to go up, and so on. So so you see who is the person actually? What age group? Let's say example that uh, a male patient of 50 years old or 55 years old male patient with a little droopy lateral brow. If you inject these three points, actually that would be of good help for this guy because that will give a little lifting up effect, an eye opening effect in this guy, and that would look nice on the face of this person and so on. So this is this is something which can be done. Apart from this, if you think of sometimes people they ask that. Uh, can you suggest us a single point of injection for brow lift? Well, you tell the patient to clinch the teeth, and that temporal fusion line, which comes basically between the temporalis, the fusion line between temporalis and frontalis. So, so that temporal fusion line, basically, if you follow the temporal fusion line and you end up over the brow, you feel a bony rounded protuberance, and there you inject, let's say, six unit intradermally each side. Will give you a lateral brow lift as a single point of injection. Actually, all right, so on. There, there is another thing which I would I, I, I like to do on patients where they feel that the skin under eye is little wrinkly, and what you need to do in this case is what you call the snap test. You pull the skin outwards and upwards, and you leave it. If the skin goes back nicely, the snap test is negative. You can inject this person, and below in the tarsal plate, you inject. Actually, you inject. And you inject, let's say, one one unit each side. Will make that kind of a anti wrinkle effect for the under eye. Makes the wrinkles smoothen out in this particular area. Is a good idea. Coming to the coming to the nose, uh, the nasalis muscle here. Each side, you tell the patient to make that particular expression. What do you call the bunny lines? Each side, you inject six six units on the. On the nasalis muscle itself. If the person has got a wider, big nose, sometimes I prefer to inject, let's say, four, and I'll inject on the dorsum also of the nasalis muscle four, and I'll inject four instead of six six. So we can do the, we can do this thing also for smoothing out this particular expression of the what do you call the bunny lines. Uh, coming to the lower alar portion of the nose, actually, a lot of people when they when you are doing their liquid rhinoplasties, a lot of people, especially women, I have seen, they request for smaller noses, and their complaint is their nose nose when they make an expression is flaring up too much. Actually, so you can intramuscularly inject three to four units each side uh, in the ala. Actually, each side you can inject in the muscle itself. So you can inject each side on the ala, and your idea is weakening of this particular muscle so that when the person makes that kind of a angry expression, so the nasal flare should not happen too much actually. So that nose should not look too wide. Similarly, in the collimilla, the base of the collimilla, if you inject uh, four to five units just to make the tip a little upwards, a loosening of this particular collimilla so as to let the tip go a little high. Uh, can also be done in certain cases when we are planning or when we are doing liquid 
liquid rhinoplasties or nose job non surgical nose nose jobs and so on what do you see sometimes in these patients is what do you say the gummy smile uh gummy smile basically uh, what the muscle which you are injecting in the gummy smile is double l san liberator labii superioris alacqua nasi uh, muscle which is the medial most muscle actually and the point of injection is 3 cm above the corner of the mouth and 1 cm outside so broadly if i if i have to tell you just outside the nasolabial fold outside the ala here is the point of injection so you inject so you inject each side so broadly 3 cm above from the corner of the mouth and 1 cm outside is the point of injection so you inject in this particular point here so that is your point where you inject one one unit each side and uh, if you don't know how go to how deep to go you go hit the periosteum retract the needle a little and push the product one one unit and the muscle which you are weakening is double l san liberator labii superioris alacqua nasi muscle weakening of this muscle will cause curtaining of the upper lip and so the gums would be covered actually and so on then we have what do you say the marionette lines or the drool lines uh, because of the depressor angularis muscle dao depressor angularis what do you need to do is you tell the patient to show the lower teeth when the patient makes that expression that pull of dao you inject a line drawn vertically from the corner of the mouth downwards basically you inject outwards on that maximum pull and uh, you inject uh, let's say 6 units on that particular area where you have the pull or over the mandible and you will see weakening of dao depressor angularis causes uh, this area to become shallow i would say a definitive treatment to make this area or to to treat the marionette line or the what do you say the drool lines uh, i would say filler is a better option but if you want to try with the with the botulinum toxin this is something which you can try then what do you have pud orange chin or pebbly chin peachy chin because of hyperactivity of mentalis muscle so you can inject the muscle the belly of the muscle actually you can inject the belly of the muscle the muscle mass depending on whose belly you can inject 10 units 12 units 15 units and uh, weakening of this particular muscle causes relaxation and now when the person makes that expression it will not be puckered there will be no dimple formation on the chin actually and so on if it is a bilobed uh, muscle or bilobed mentalis in certain cases you can inject each lobe maximum what do you say the bulk of the muscle the belly or each side you can inject let's say 6 unit 6 unit or 7 unit 7 unit 8 unit 8 unit each side for this muscle and so on so the weakening will happen and uh, this will look uh, uniform this will not pucker basically when the person will make that expression there is another uh, perioral thing basically what do you call the smokers lines uh normally which generally we i i i i would say this is more popular to do in the western world where you have uh, let's say a lady of 55 or 60 year old lady and she is saying that i have this lines radial lines and uh, the problem is when she applies a lipstick these lines they run uh, the lipstick runs radially outwards because of the capillary action so what you do is as an off label indication you tell the patient to make that expression of so that pucker ex expression so when the patient makes that puckered expression you inject each side there will be two main folds so you behind the vermilion border inject interdermally one unit you inject one unit and lower there is one so you inject one unit behind the vermilion border and each side again so other side one one and the lower one behind the vermilion border so two one unit one unit one unit one unit interdermal and one unit below one unit below on that mountain which is there when the person makes that expression of puckering and so on so for facial contouring what do you call it what do you inject is uh, the hypertrophic masseter muscle you tell the patient to clench the teeth between your middle finger and the four finger what do you see is the anterior and the posterior belly of the masseter muscle the highest arch point that belly of that particular muscle is the point of injection where you inject anywhere from 15 20 to 25 units each side uh in another 6 uh, to 8 weeks the muscle becomes uh, quite soft the flattening happens contouring happens and uh, people they appreciate their look and the good thing is the result lasts as long as 6 to 8 months and uh, someone who keeps doing it for you know another 2 uh, or 3 sessions will find a very long uh, change will find uh, the results quite long and persistent actually 
so this is a very simple uh, way of injection you take uh, uh, your botulinum toxin go intramuscular and before you inject you retract the plunger and push the product intramuscularly and so on for the first uh, first month the patient might feel uh, weakening of the tight bite but that weans off after uh, another 4 weeks and so on then apart from this there is another indication very popular nowadays mid face lift or nephrititis face lift you inject starting from the in front of the tragus with a gap of 2 to 3 cm along the jaw and stop in front of the dao uh, well understand what we are injecting in this particular case is the platysma platysmal band platysmal muscle which is the depressor so when we weaken the depressor uh, the sharpness on that particular jaw area will improve and between these two points below we'll inject another line actually so let's say around 15 each 15 units each line a total of around 30 to 35 units across the jaw intradermally you inject each side actually and that will make the that particular area jaw area uh, that will reshape the jaw area that will make that jaw line quite sharp actually and that is what is popular with the name of nephrititis face lift or mid face lift then what we have is uh, which is not really visible on this dummy when some uh, certain individuals with lean uh, faces and thin neck when they they talk actually these are the prominent bands what do you say the the turkey necks or the platysmal bands which are visible and these bands also can be softened by injecting botulinum toxin uh from the mandible to the clavicle along the the complete length you can inject intramuscularly with a gap of 2 to 2 cm 1 1 unit you can spread across depending on whose neck how long is the band 8 to 16 to 20 units can be injected each band actually which will soften this and will make the neck much more smoother so it is very very important for us to know the muscles and their actions if you know your muscles it's it is absolutely easy to inject the faces uh well as a beginner the best area to inject is the the frontal area actually because there are no muscle crossovers as such and lot of patients are interested to get this particular procedure done and while uh, the amount of toxin needed for this particular indication the glabular complex the horizontal forehead lines is quite high actually compared to any other part and so on when you come to the mid face and the lower face is actually the only problem is the muscle crossover is high so the chances of product trickling to the wrong muscle is uh, much more higher uh, which might end up into a complication so you should be very careful if you know your muscles you know the action and uh, you then make your points accordingly so you have to customize you can say uh, it is not always fixed it has to be customized according to the patient needs or the patient musculature actually so when you customize you will always be making your patient happy because the results will be customized to that particular uh, the patient and according to suitable for that particular face and so on uh, so so all in all these are some of the main points of injections and uh, in our second video video we will dis discuss about uh, how to avoid complications and uh, what to do in case of uh, complications which arise uh, injections of botulinum toxin on the face thank you